Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoag here with a must-watch video for investors. The crazy volatility with stocks up or down 2 and 3% today has been great for stock traders, but a nightmare for long-term investors. That's why I reached out to a trader on some of the stock trends and signals you can use in this market. I'm going to turn it over to the resident stock trading expert, Thomas Carvo, for a great look into the historical trends around the yield curve inversion and its signal for a recession as well as some stock signals and what to expect for this market. What's going on everyone and welcome on into this video. So the stock market has been wild over the past six months. You have some stocks hitting all time highs. You have some stocks going down to 52 week lows and beyond multi-year lows, stocks that were superpowers during the pandemic, such as Netflix getting crushed off of earnings and future guidance. And under the surface, there are even many more stocks where that came from. Many small caps, especially these days, trading below cash value on the back of interest rate increases, on the back of recession fears, and sentiment, which is gonna be a big piece of this video. Now this choppiness has been great for day traders, but it's been really challenging and really frustrating for those who are invested or diversified investors. You may see some stocks doing quite well, but those two steps you take forward, you walk back two steps with your growth stocks that may take a hit over the past couple of months. So it's really frustrating and many people are dealing with choppiness in their portfolio or their investing strategies. So today we're gonna look at some current trends in the market. We're gonna look at sentiment. We're gonna look at the yield curve. We're gonna look at the last couple of times and even beyond that the yield curve has inverted. The two year and the 10 year yield have inverted. What has happened in the market? What could we potentially expect, especially with the word recession being tossed around? And then really what we need to know to make our own decisions and our own investments going forward. On top of that, there'll be a link in the video description where Joseph and I put together a webinar covering three awesome trading and investing signals that you can utilize in your own investing. We'll have more on that later. So right now we are looking at the two year, 10 year yield spread, okay? When this goes negative, which we actually saw briefly a few weeks back, when this goes negative, that is when we have that yield curve inversion. And if we look at this chart, it's only happened a couple of times going back into the 1980s. The farthest this chart goes back to is roughly 1980 here on CNBC. So this happened back here, looks like 2005, 2006. We had this next push back here in 1998. And then we had a couple other times back here in the 80s as well. So this is the big yield curve that everyone talks about because it tends to signal a recession looming in the near future. And it's actually been quite accurate at doing so. So what I wanna do is I wanna pull up some charts, some data, okay? Here is one piece of data that we wanna look at right here. This is from LPL Research. And what they have done is they've pulled the last four times the two year and the 10 year have inverted, okay? And actually what it tells us is that's been quite bullish for stocks. The last time we saw this happen was actually in August of 2019. The next column right here is the bull market peak. So what happens here is that they're pulling data from the past couple of years or past you know, a couple of decades. And then from that time that we get that yield curve inversion, what does the market do? Well, the market's actually peaked months later. And in 2019, it peaked in February before we saw the massive, massive dump in March when we had the pandemic fears. However, from that yield curve inversion to that peak, we saw an 18% return in the S&P 500. And it took almost six months to do so. The past three times before that, 2005, 1998, and 1988, what do we see? We saw 25, 39, and a 33% return in the S&P 500 until the peak of that bull market. And those peaks came roughly 20 months later, so over a year later, until we saw the peak of that market. Now, what I do want to also mention is if you go back beyond 85, beyond 1985, you're going to see actually a slightly different story, okay? And what do we mean by that? Well, if you go back in time to see those yield curve inversions, if you go back to pre-1985, you'll see that on average, we actually had negative returns across the S&P 500. Not huge, but negative returns in the coming months and coming year. On average, we've seen positive returns in the coming months and the coming year, if you look at 1985 to present day. So we do have to take this into account. It's not like you can just look at the small sample size and say, hey, market's gonna go up but it is notable. Next thing I wanna to touch on is sentiment, okay? So now we're getting a bigger picture of where you know, the market's been at least the last couple of times we've had this yield curve inversion. It doesn't necessarily signal a top in the stock market immediately, but if we take a look at sentiment, we're looking right now at the AAII survey. This is American Association of Individual Investors. And what we see, 
is so far in the month of April, we're actually seeing bullishness at some of the lowest levels we have seen in quite some time, okay? Roughly 15 to 20% we are seeing bullish, okay? Whereas we're seeing a good chunk of people neutral in the 35% range and then over 40% the past couple of weeks we are seeing in the bearish category, right? Now, if we take a bigger picture look at what this sentiment survey actually tells us, that'll be this chart right here. And what we have been seeing as of late is that this is at a level we have not seen since 2005 and then back into 1992, okay? We have come down to a level that we have not seen in quite some time. Now, this chart may be choppy, but what it's doing is it's, it's showing us the percentage of bulls right now based on this survey in the overall market. So let's go back to LPL research and let's see some of these times that we've seen less than 20% of the survey being bullish. What has the stock market done in the coming months? Well, it's actually quite surprising. This data is very, very interesting. Now, obviously we could write a new script this year, next year. But look at this data. Going back to 1998, the top of our screen, and then 2022 here at the bottom, which we have yet to kind of see how the next couple of months progress, we have only seen the stock market red two times when we've seen this survey dip under 20%, and that was the next three months. We have seen it green almost every time but one in the coming six and 12 months. And that one year was 2008, okay? That was the year that we did not see the stock market rally after we saw sentiment down at levels pretty much similar to where we are right now. And back at that time in 2008, it was actually January 10th, we saw the sentiment or that bull sentiment come in at 19.6% bullish. And then we saw a 6.2% decline in the coming three months. We saw a 12% decline in the coming six and a 37% decline in the coming 12 months after that survey. But on average, the past couple of decades, you'll see roughly a 6.7% return in the next three months, a 12% return in the next six, and a 19.8, almost 20% return in the next 12 months. Not to mention we also line up with some of the lowest global growth optimism of all time. We are at all time lows according to a Bank of America survey. This is a chart going back to essentially looking at the past couple of decades. And we will see that the past two times we saw global growth optimism at lows back in 2019 and 2020, we did see quite nice rebounds across the S&P 500. Those were actually times that we bottomed out. So this, the past two times has indicated a bottom and it gets a little bit choppier as you look back through 2008, 2006, 2000, and then 1998. And lastly, I wanna talk about the 10 year bond yield really quick. We are seeing a spike in the 10 year that we have not seen over the past decade, okay? To the extent that we are seeing right now in 2022. Okay, the 10 year has moved from a little dip we saw in early March from roughly 1.68% to almost 3% in about a month and a half. That's quite the extreme move, but the last couple of times we've come up here towards 3% on the 10 year, guess what's happened? We've seen nice declines both of those times, late 2013, and then we saw this late 2018 when the 10 year got up to levels around 3%. So. We're looking at a big picture view of what the market's telling us, what the data and what the history tells us. Now I ask you your thoughts in the comment section down below. I wonder if a lot of people are under that very, very bearish sentiment outlook, or if people are starting to look on the contrary and think this could be a time while the sentiment and a lot of indicators may signal we're going down, that there could be some good opportunities out there, especially in certain areas of the stock market. Now, if you do wanna add three awesome trading signals to your arsenal, Joseph and I put together an awesome webinar covering those signals in depth, and I would highly recommend you check that out. That'll be linked in the video description. We also have some bonuses there as well to take advantage of. Thanks so much for watching. Consider subscribing and joining the community here. Hope you have a great rest of your day.